if we tried to make two champions that had more to do with each other than any other champions we've ever made before. The way that we make champions, we're always questioning ourselves. Is this something that players are going to fall in love with? DNA is the designer, uh, the narrative, and the artist. These three, the DNA, will follow a champion all the way from start to end so that we can make sure each of those sides are married to each other. We've had concept artists go to coffee and come back and show us something scribbled on a napkin, and that becomes a character. The artist, the concept artist, will start drawing. When we get to start developing a champion, like, and I'm just sketching, and it's open, and it's like figuring out, you know, what the thing could be. As the like kid in me that grew up drawing, you know, like that, that's super fun. Exploring colors at this point. The writers will start researching. There's mythologies, characters, stories, tropes. My character suddenly becoming angry that someone killed them, not angry that they died. Someone killed the them. The designers will them. start looking at gameplay mechanics. Who are the characters and what are their abilities? Do you run fast? Do you jump high? Are you very tough to kill? Does this work? Does this not work? Why does it work? Why doesn't it you work? You have to be on. You have to be on the floor. You have to be talking to people. You have to be communicating vision. In a screenplay or a comic, there's a plot that I can sort of use to show you who this person is. You don't actually have that choice in League of Legends. There's not a story. There's not an ending. There's not a end of the episode. There's just this personality. It's like light knobs. I didn't hear. I do think that there's a common perception that the way we create champions is that someone comes up with a really cool idea uh, and shows it off to everyone else, and everyone's like, yeah, that's a great idea. We're going to make exactly that. And then we go and we make it, and then we're done, and we ship it. But in reality, making champions is an incredibly collaborative process. Sniper and spotter, acrobat and springboard maker, wires and electricity, light and dark, love conquers all. In the earlier phases of development, we're not trying to be too grounded in what's realistic because that can certainly stifle creativity. Like you say, Augie's gonna have to commit to something. You definitely need to have a thick skin. We, we hear you guys, we'll start over. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, over 100 people will have worked on the champion. I worked on Bard, Echo, Kindred, Aurelian Soul, Ivern. Alawi, Rek'Sai, uh, Tom Kench, Jin, Fiddlesticks, uh, Nocturne, Thresh, Nar, Dr. Mundo. What you don't want to end up with is uh, generic characters that don't feel real and don't feel like they live and breathe somewhere. We don't expect that every player is going to be in love with every champion. We really expect that players will, will gravitate towards a handful that sort of connect with the player on some sort of emotional level. Without fail, every single time we release a champion, we know we're going to learn from players a million things that we could have never predicted. We wanted to make the ultimate duo experience. We all settled very quickly on lovers. We don't have a true romance in League of Legends. These are two people who are never going to leave each other's side. What is love? I mean, what does love look like for a race that we don't even know exists yet? Love is curiosity. Love is unconditional. Love evolves. Of love. Like trying to put a stake in the ground and be like, what do they say about love? Okay. Is, I think, fundamentally dangerous because you begin to drift towards having them be all about a statement about love. I am like, how do they fight together? Why is that cool? And how does love add like some interesting and some spice to it? That's it, right? He's the center of the, of the show, you know, he's the star of the show. A tall, lean, athletic, beautiful specimen of a guy. He's very, very fast. It's like a high adrenaline play style, which is pretty unique to support. And he's a little on the edge of dangerous. She's much more mysterious, much more reserved, much more coy. She is much more inconspicuous, camouflaged, but much deadlier. He will mesmerize you, and she's the one that will kill you. A petite, raven-esque blade dancer. So we started exploring uh, birds and, and, and wings. 
His main feature is this big plume of peacock feathers that he's going to use to um, cast spells. That's going to be a nice flows, also yeah. with the ears. Right here, uh, I came in this morning, just had this idea um, that we should do like a really nice flourish for his cue. So his cue is like a skill shot. Uh, it fires a projectile. We were wondering sort of whether we should sort of like kick up debris, you know, like woof, yeah, or whether it should it. be like feathers from the cape or like energy, you know. That's cool, man. I love seeing ideation like this. All these different possibilities of where things can go, then that leads to another idea, then that leads to another idea, and it's just like this awesome sort of mass of ideas from everyone on the team. We test the gameplay of new champions twice every day for a successful champion League of Legends. But you have to have a killer gameplay. You have to understand why the audience will like the things they like. The damage coming out of the, the Zaya ult, though, was I think it was a mix of both the visual soft and the damage was a little soft. Yeah, definitely. And so I didn't, I didn't, really I didn't find myself playing around the, the, the damage very much. Yeah, me neither. I think the only time damage came into the effect for me was... And we're not making a character for immediate splash. We're making a character forever. And the final judge is our players. So we bring in League of Legends players from outside to test out the champions while they're in development and get their feedback. I would like to see a little bit more range on this so cast squishy. Uh, they do decent damage. I had a difficult time distinguishing between the two. That's, that's actually a really good point. Yeah, yeah. I think I mentioned it. And we actually bring in professional players, too, to see what they think. Wait, you know you're moving during that? We can hear you. Oh, okay, great. I'm going rogue! There's a surprise. I'm going rogue! There's a surprise. I love you. I know. I love you. I know. I love you. Я говорил, Рейкон, не будем глумиться. Уха, катарария! Коркма, я кашу кулара бише олмас. Уналтра виктория перевастая. Уйдей, прям гондос. Что ты парефе, если вамос а комер комида де уманус диспоз дэсто? То кохам мракана понад жити. Маша ухала! Шэй чудо сё бусим на? Прям, он мега чумшай ка. А чумбар, хэкуэ? I would describe the style of League of Legends as wonderfully eclectic, um, almost to the point of disaster. We have pirates, we have wraiths, we have ents, we have assassins, we have like everything you could ever want, little punk geniuses who make time travel devices. We tend to really draw from our own personal lives and our own personal experiences. Our role is to bring characters to life, but at the end of the day, it's our players who own them. There's nothing like when the character goes live. To me, at least, it's a distinct feeling when they're no longer yours. It stops being like in your head, in your space, and the players just take them. They imbue them with more personality than you would imagine, and they do different things with them, and they kind of take on their own life. <laughs>